Good evening. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, guys. Hi, Roz and Joan. Hi, Charlotte, Natalie. Hi, Sharon, Liz. Hi, everybody. How is everyone this evening? Mm -hmm. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Mm -hmm. That's great. You can you can see me. You can see me. Um, if people can refrain just from sending me any PMs because it pops up on the thing and it breaks the the the. It fuzzes up the old internet. Okay, let me see who we got. Can you see me? Yeah. Hello, hello. Where is everybody this evening? If you can just pop up where you're where you're uh, tuning in from, it'd be nice. Broadcast interrupted. Yeah, it does that when somebody sends me a PM. It just it'll interrupt the whole thing. So I'm kind of asking people. Message me when when we're done so that um hi Denise hiya James Christopher how you doing Pat Hi Lorraine Hello Bernie Mooney Welcome I don't know if anyone's the first time uh coming on to the live if you l let me know if, if it's your first time coming on um let me know where you're you're tuning in from Tipperary London Drogheda, Kings Court. Hi, Francis. How are you, Melissa? Hi, Melissa. Well done on your two weeks on your coffee. Melissa lost twenty one inches in two weeks drinking a cup of coffee a day. Well done. Hi, Michelle Sweeney. Drogheda, Led Village, Dundalk, Dundalk. Hi, hi, Anya Lynch, Sandra, Glenn. Hi, Glenn. Donna Marie. Fun shock. Is that is that Colin? Fun shock. Um Dublin, Dundalk beside the fire. Yeah, do you know what? Um if you think there's flashing lights beside me, there is. It's the Christmas tree, but the fire is there as well. And um uh my dog who's kind of floating around having a good sniff, wondering what is going on here. Um hi Denise. Hi Jenny O'Rourke in Waterford, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll just wait for, um, we have a few more people that want to go on. Um, Riley is trying to run away with a snowman. Actually, no, he is. Oh my God, okay. Worse than kids. <laughs> Dogs. Um, just give me, send me a few of those love hearts or the, those likes. I love to see the love hearts coming in just to let me know that everybody can hear me. We're waiting on a few more people to, to jump on. Um, <clears throat> Punchog. Punchog. Cook's 10. Well, you're all very welcome. It's great to see all these people connecting all in the one spot and then... Look at the love hearts, they're lovely. You see, the love hearts bring the energy and that's what we want, guys. Hi, Geraldine Murphy. Um, you know, you need that energy to, to jump in. Uh, hello, Ross Keegan. Uh, hi, Vani and Morris. Hi, guys, how are you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the crazy Fiona one's going live. This is what we do on a Sunday. Um, hi, Anne Leonard. Anya Lynch Dunlear. Hello, Anya. It's great to see we've people coming in and people are coming in all over the globe. Um, but we've somebody on there from Australia. Uh, we've people on there from London, down the country, across the country, up the country. It's great. Hi, Louisa. Uh, Jennifer Curran, I think you're in Wicklow. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, hi, Gronia Kirk, how are you? It's nice to see everybody popping on. Uh, hiya, Jared. Night for the fire. It sure is a night for the fire. I have the fire lit. I can't. You can't beat the old fire. So behind me here, I don't know whether anybody can see, is my gorgeous painting that a good friend of mine got done for me. It's Archangel Michael. 
Isn't he beautiful? Absolutely gorgeous. Hi from Northumberland. Cat Bradley, hello. Very welcome this evening. Jennifer Curran, yep, you see, I got your address right. Well, well, not the full address, but I know it's County Wicklow. Um, <laughs> it's been a while. Um, somebody's saying, yeah. I just, if anyone can just kind of hang on not to PM me while we're live, because it does interrupt the connection, and then it kind of goes, it, it, it breaks the chain of thought. So, um, Sarah Lynette Finn. Michael, look at him. Isn't he absolutely gorgeous? Um, I don't know whether if I turn around and uh, I don't know if you guys can see him properly, but he's just... Mm -hmm. the, the the camera doesn't do him justice. He was hand done and a friend of mine got him, got him done for me as a gift and it's the nicest gift I think I've ever got off anybody, but um, it's absolutely beautiful on you, yeah. Um, Neve McMahon, hi from wet Dublin. Well, it's wet and County Loud as well, Neve. Really is. Uh, oh, look at Geraldine Beardsley. There you are, Dennis. Well, there you are, Beardsley. Keep drinking that coffee, pet. <laughs> uh, um, thanks, Neve. It is a beautiful picture. And you know what? I think it's lovely when people, um, you know, she says to me, I have something for you. And I said, all right, okay. And she took out this painting and she says, I got this done for you. And I went, oh, my God, you know, he is just, look at him. Look, he just sits up there on the wall, looking down over everybody. Archangel Michael is the angel of protection. He's also the angel of courage. And, and um, you know, uh, in New York, you see all the policemen walking around with their Archangel Michael signed on their arm as well, you know, which is lovely. Um Hello from Mayo. Hi, Mary Coyne. How are you? Um, yeah, absolutely protection. But but the link with Archangel Michael, he can simultaneously be with each and every single person that calls him. So you know you're you're never you're never wasting your angel's time when you ask for a bit of help. And you know what, guys? I know sometimes because we're human beings, we have to maybe ask something about twenty times or even a hundred times in an hour, that, um, you know, we only have to ask the angels once because they hear you straight away. Now, they may not give you an instant sign that everything's going to be okay, mm -hmm. but you know what? I think it's very comforting to know that, you know, you're, you're, the archangels are there, which are fabulous, but each and every human being has their own angel. Uh, hello, Elizabeth. Um, what's happening? Hi, Holly. What's happening? Um, Elizabeth, we're connecting with spirit and we're talking to the angels here this evening. If you don't know what's happening, um, maybe have a look on the page there and mm -hmm. uh, pick a card. I have three angel cards there, so each person can either pick dream, love and hope. The purple glow around me. Well, it's the Christmas tree. Look, 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 look. So I'm not glowing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not glowing tonight. Yeah, I know what happened there the other night was nuts with, with the with the orbs and the colours and the whole up. But this evening, um, we have the Christmas tree glowing. So if it's this side of my face, then it's the Christmas tree. If it's this side of my face, then it's spirit. So um, it's nice to have a little bit of a glow. I'm like I was like a glow worm the other night while um while we were doing the readings. Okay, now Neve McMahon, that there, that tree is like hoof long and never missed, literally, because um I was tortured until until I gave mm -hmm. in that they wanted to put it up the other day. So I said, "Go on, knock yourself out. Look at it." The bottom of it is flashing. The middle of it is kind of twinkling and the top of it is, isn't doing a whole lot, you know. But you look at it. That, that's my house. Typical. Um, okay, Carol Mulcairns. Kathy, hi. 
just if everyone can pop up where they are t- uh, this evening mm-hmm. on this nice cold winter's evening. I hope everybody's feeling safe and well at home uh, while you're watching this. Hello, Spirit. Hi, Christopher, Elizabeth, Kaylee. Hi, Neve, Le- Leslie. Hi, Leslie. You haven't missed it. It's here. Hi, Vivian, Anne. Hope and dream in Drogheda. Okay. So I hope anyway, you know what, anyone that's that's just popping on, go on and pick your card. You can pick dream, love and hope. And uh, hi, Michelle Moran. Hi, Greg from Monaghan. Um, Rollstown, Sylvia, where's Rollstown? Sorry, excuse my, my geography is not great now at the moment. Cathy's in Carrick, I know where that is. Uh, Megan Cullen, dream. Sarah Liffin. Okay, Navin. Tracy Mulhall. Hi, Tracy. Guys, it's so, you know what, I think it's fantastic just waiting um, for a few more to pop on. Ellen O'Brien. Well, a big, give them a big cuddle from me because the jokes between swords and ash. Oh, okay. Thanks, Sylvia. I know now. I won't forget that now, you see. Okay. Now. So if anyone that, that, that is going to be PM and me, can you wait till we're finished? Because every time somebody goes ding, ding or beep, um, it breaks the connection. And then everybody will be shouting, saying, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. OK, so we've picked the cards for this evening. Um, the reason why I'm doing this on a Sunday, I think this is a great way to get going for your Monday. A lot of people on a Sunday evening I just kind of, they get to a certain time on Sunday evening and they kind of go, oh God, it's Monday tomorrow. Ugh. So what I've decided to do each Sunday evening, hello Tracy from, Tracy from mm-hmm. Kerry, Kim in Pennsylvania. Well, you're very welcome to this live in Pennsylvania. Hobart, Indiana. Wow. Hi, Debbie. Wow. Everybody's tuning in this is fantastic it's great to see everyone connected i think the angels are got this energy is going to be so high tonight please stop messaging me because every time somebody messages i get cut off and there will be disruption to the to the to the line so anyway sunday evening i know that most people it not for me i love mondays i love every day i love jumping out of that bed and knocking me cup of coffee back and away i go you know but a lot of people on a Sunday evening kind of get a bit, oh, it's going to be Monday and they're weak. You know what? You need to start maybe looking at changing how you look at Mondays. I think a lot of people go, oh, it's Monday again. I hate this. You know, what about waking up or going to bed and saying, you know what? I'm going to embrace tomorrow. I'm going to do something different. And um, start your day like that because, you know, Thoughts create actions and then actions create reactions. And what happens is when we give the negative and give into the negative, then the negative will win. So my challenge to anyone tonight going, going to bed. Hi, Joanne Breen. How are you, honey? Hi, Natalie. Dream. Um, no, this is all connected. Once I have the, this on, this is on my medium page, Rosalind. So that messenger doesn't go up, doesn't switch off when I'm on the medium page. It does on the other one. So, Jerry Maguire picks love. But anyway, I challenge every single person out there tonight to maybe, um, to maybe just when you're going to bed, maybe say, you know what? I'm not going to embrace, you know, I'm not going to embrace the negative with regards to Mondays. Uh, I'm going to embrace the positive. And, and you know what? What you put out there will come directly to you because we are like magnets to the universe and it does listen and your angels listen as well. So, um, fresh new week of new chances. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, can, can people stop messaging me um, just until we do this, okay? Now, so here are the cards. Look, 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 it's all exciting. <laughs> so there is dream. For those of you who picked dream. So then we have love. And then we have hope. 
Um, now, as always, I allow the cards to choose. I let them choose the cards. I don't pick the cards. I shuffle the cards. And nine out of ten times, three cards, hi, Carmel and Offaly, three cards jump out. Um, and they're the cards I'll use. Now, these ones did fall out on the table and I haven't looked at them because I just think that it's... This is for you guys out there and uh, anybody watching and listening, you know what, you're all very welcome. Um, it's great to see people that are across the globe tuning in on a Sunday evening, um, you know, just to get connected with your own angel and maybe get connected with yourself and how you're feeling tonight. So... So I'm going to ask you a favour, okay? What I am going to ask a favour is every now and again, will you pop up a little love heart on the screen so that I know that I'm not crazy woman talking to myself. Um, I must be talking to myself because people are still messaging me. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to go with dream. So if you've picked dream this evening, okay, here is... The card. Now, I haven't looked at them, so I'm going to let you guys see it first. Isn't it lovely? I just think that the, the, pictures, the, 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 the pictures on them are absolutely fabulous. And this says, you are on the right path. So for those of you who pick Dream, all right... There's a little prayer on the bottom of these Archangel Michael cards. You know, you can get these Archangel Michael cards in any good bookstore or online. I would recommend everyone on the planet get themselves a deck of angel cards because, you know, they give great comfort and they give great healing for people. But there's a little prayer on the bottom of this and it says, Archangel Michael, I call upon you now, thank you for, for giving me loud and clear guidance that I easily understand. Thank you for motivating me and filling me with the courage and the confidence to make healthful life changes. I think that's such a lovely, lovely thing. Um, you know, the, the big thing that jumps out here is when, when the prayer says that we can easily understand the signs you know, sometimes we put so many questions out there to the universe and the angels that we get confused. We confuse ourselves, you know. Um, a very old friend of mine who's in the spirit world used to say to me years ago, keep it simple, stupid. You know, and it is about if you keep life simple, then you'll be able to see everything that's coming towards you. And you'll, be, you'll never miss a trick and you'll never miss a moment with regards to... Um, being on the right path. Now, this comes in. Okay, so I need to acknowledge <coughs> when... <clears throat> okay, when I start clearing my throat, that's when spirits start to step in and my silver lady will is here as well. She's always there, but she's very, very strong this evening. Um, possibly because of the, the amount of lovely souls that's on this link tonight, which is lovely. But she's going to assist me in communicating to whoever this is that's coming through, okay? Mm -hmm. If this person is for you, you know what, just give the thumbs up or give me a little message in, in the in the box there to let me know, you know, that we're on the right track and the per it's the right person I'm speaking to, okay? <laughs> but when spirit come through with me, Nine out of ten times, they will physically, I'm loving the hearts, they will physically put on to me how they passed over. Now, it does not mean that they are suffering in any way, shape or form in the spirit world. It's called physical mediumship where I, I experience how they passed over. It's not always the nicest thing, but you know what? It's, it's sometimes it's their way, if, especially if they haven't communicated before, of coming through and saying hello to somebody. OK, so and then sometimes they'll step in and they'll be talking about names, dates, places and everyone's head will be in a spin. So if you understand the, the stuff that's coming in. um, Sure, just send me a little message. Thanks for the the love hearts on your lynch. I have my angel cards and love them. Yeah, I think everybody should have angel cards. Hiya, Tracy. How are you? Um. 
you know, when you're being told that you're on the right path from from the angels, you know, sometimes we do question where we're going, what we're doing. Am I doing this right? Should I be doing this? Should I be doing something else? Somebody, whoever has picked dream has either been questioning their life and where they're going, what they're doing and how they're doing it. OK, you know what? Your gut feeling that that central part of your body, an inch above your, your belly button in your tummy area is what we call the solar plexus. Our healers call it the solar plexus. And it's where we hold all our emotions and our feelings. And we also hold the fear there as well. So, you know, when somebody says, oh, I just had this horrible feeling that something wasn't right. And guess what? You are 100 percent. And yet people, for whatever reason, they will tune into the feeling that something's not right rather than being so quick to tune into that feeling of excitement that comes in around the belly button as well. It's the butterflies in the belly, as they say. Um, with kids, you say, have your butterflies in your belly? Are you nervous, you know? But sometimes, you know, to listen to your own body, I don't know if many of you get time to maybe take five minutes out of your day and sit with yourself. It's very, very healing. Um, when we quieten the mind and, and we just sit down to do nothing, to just breathe and be present with yourself, the more you do that, the more you're getting in touch with what's inside of you. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, what does she mean by what's inside of you? I mean by the feelings and emotions, because a lot of people out there are going with their head. The head, the head, the head, the head, the head. And they feel that if they're thinking something, then it has to be right. You know what? Listen to your body. Your body is the one thing that you can count on that is going to let you know everything's going to be okay. Sometimes we're in situations, but, but the link with this card and whoever picked dream, you know what, you're on the right path. Um, you know what, you're also being told, don't be worrying around, um, if you're worrying around financial stuff, you know, know that, that spirit and the angels see everything that's going on. And if you can think on, and here's a very good one, because I think this is really, really good, because I do it myself. If you can look back, and think of the worst time you've ever had. And then look at now and say, you know what? I didn't think I'd get through that. But you know what? You're still standing. Nobody knocked you over. And the reason why you're standing is because of you. It's not because of anybody else. It's because your soul is stronger sometimes than the body is and the mind. So the spirit is stronger. And it's a really good thing to be able to sit for five minutes of a day, guys. You know what? If you can't fi find five minutes for yourself to sit on your own, just to breathe, then you need to find an hour. And that's the difference with, um, with not, I hear so many people saying, I don't have the time. And I'm going, you know what? I think that would be putting a lot of headstones. God forgive me, but... She didn't have the time or I told you this, I was sick, you know, but, you know, a lot of people kill themselves working and then they they have to use all the money that they've earned working to make themselves better from being so bloody sick. You know, emotions cause sickness. So be mindful of your body. Be mindful of what other people are dishing out to you. We don't make other people feel the way they feel. A lot of people say to me, I felt very responsible because she went off feeling so, so, uh, or whatever. If some, if you have something to say and you're speaking mm -hmm. your truth and you're standing in your truth, then you're fine. How somebody takes on what you're saying is how they take it on. So, mm -hmm. you know, I say to people, you know, we give suggestions. Spirit and the angels give suggestions to people to help them on with their lives. We don't tell people what to do. It's, it's against the rule book. We're not allowed to do that. But when we give suggestions, if you're in a situation that I feel as well around this dream, the people that pick dream, if there's somebody around you that you've been trying to help, but yet they keep going out and making the same mistake over and over again. Perhaps it's time to maybe take that step back and say, you know what? They have to make that decision themselves. Sometimes we feel responsible for other people and their feelings, but you're not. They're responsible mm -hmm. for them 
and they're responsible for their feelings. So what I will say to anyone who feels just a little bit, you know, under pressure, maybe trying to help somebody or whatever, you know, there's that old saying of you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. And it's so very, very true. It's such a simple statement, but it's very, very true. Mm-hmm. Um, we can't make the horse drink the water. It has to be thirsty enough. And sometimes people have to hit such a hard wall in their lives before they realise Oh, my God. I, I I need to stop what I'm doing. OK, so if you do have a situation, whoever picked dream, if you do have a situation around you where you're just feeling exhausted, um, where somebody has been pulling out of you mentally, physically and emotionally and they're not listening, maybe it's time to take a few baby steps back and take some breather time, breathing space for you. And not not them, because you know what? We can't make other people do something for themselves. They have to want to. And that's the difference. You know, I get so many people saying, why won't they do this? And why won't they do that? You know, that because they don't have to. They have to make that choice. Um, you know, to, to, to be able to inspire somebody to connect with themselves and maybe think about what's happening in their lives today with regards to... You're being told here by the by Archangel Michael that you're on the right path. You know, sometimes on that path of life, we're going to meet people where, ah, I call them the energy vampires. They'll come in and suck the living life out of you and they'll go off absolutely floating and you're left sitting at the kitchen table going, oh, I have a migraine. I was fine till that person came in. You know, be mindful and protective of who you give your energy to. Okay. Um, I feel if there's a different career path, especially there's Patrice Flanagan there, the link with different career paths comes in as in if you're doing something or you want to go and study something and you're saying, but I don't have the means to do this and I, and I have to work and I have to do this, you're already limiting yourself. So stop putting the blocks up there. It, you, you just can't do it. It's physically not possible to achieve anything if you begin by blocking yourself. So by sitting for five minutes, five minutes, guys, each day, you will open up all the all the energy fields in your body, which is which are called chakras, and you will help spirit to connect with you. And um, you know, the guidance that comes with Archangel Michael, he's not going to lead you down a path that's not meant for you. As there's an old saying also, uh, you know. God will only give you what you can handle, you know, and with the lads above and friends and family, you know, keeping family close, keeping your true friends close, but be mindful of those energy vampires that will come around you. They're, they're there all the time. you got to be mindful of who you're sharing your energy with. And, um, you know, what you're doing. If you're having the same conversation with a particular person over and over and over and they're doing nothing to change it, stop. You are responsible for you to stop. If you don't, well, then you know what? You're going to get drained and your life is going to start to get clouded with negativity. So be very mindful. When Archangel Michael says, yeah, you are on the right path, but you need to keep the path clear. How do we do that? We do that by sitting down for five minutes of a day and just giving a silent prayer to someone and maybe thinking of somebody else and send, sending a silent intention for somebody else as well as yourself, you know. To put yourself first is not being selfish because when you go first and everything's rolling in the right way for you, and this is especially with everyone that picked dream, when everything is rolling in the right direction for you, you are able to help <coughs> many more people in your life the amount of people that you'll be able to help but your path has to be clear um yes you will trip and fall every now and again but guess what pick yourself up dust yourself off and get back on that horse of life sometimes we are um we can get very blinkered with our thinking and for ourselves and i gotta say for those of you who pick dream as well can you not measure your life of other people's your life is yours, 
what you achieve in, in, in a year, some people don't achieve in a lifetime. Always remember that you can look at what, what looks to be perfect isn't always perfect. Let me tell you, there is nobody out there that hasn't got some type of, whether it's physical, emotional or mental pain going on in their family. Every family has it. So when you see somebody, instead of maybe getting a little bit green eyed, maybe send a blessing because maybe that person needs a blessing, regardless if they're living on the house on the hill with the 2.4 children and the the, the jeeps and the whole lot. It's not about the physical. It's about the emotional and the spiritual. So it's not all that. OK, so the next time you think, oh, if I only had what he had and if I only had what she had, uh, it's all available to you. Do you want it? If you want it, take off the blinkers. If you're looking at a situation where you're going to maybe move forward in a job. Go for it. What's stopping you? Well, I tell you, what's stopping you? You. That's who's stopping. You are stopping you. And it's not nice truth. It was said to me many, many, many years ago. You know, sometimes when we need a little bit of help, the real people step in, but they'll speak the truth. And we might not like it, but you know what? It's very healing. And reality checks are really, really good. No, we can't take the material with us, Natalie O'Sullivan. You're dead right there. But um, what what we can do while we're here is, is yeah, you got to help self before you can help anybody else. And that's just the top and the bottom of it here. So uh, whoever it is that picked Dream, y your path is clear. The only person that will put obstacles on that path is you. You're going to have to start taking some time out and let... Life do what it's meant to be doing. It already knows what's, what's, what's coming. Your soul, your blueprint, which you've already written for this lifetime, it already knows. You've been here before many, many times. You just have a new body, you know. But sometimes you got to sit with the soul for five minutes, okay? So the dream people, you know what? If there is something that's coming up in your life for, that, that requires you to have a bit of faith, and maybe fly blind for a little while. Know that you're being protected, that you are loved, but you are always watched over via Archangel Mike. I think I lost it there, did I? The energy, there's an energy coming in around me. I can feel it. It's completely, completely different. Okay, the thumbs up. You see, Patrice, sometimes when we feel lost, but we're not lost. In actual fact, you, you've never been more centred or focused ever in your life when we feel lost. Um, you know, for anyone that, that has that feeling around them, what I would suggest to do is, again, sit down, light a candle, you know, s talk to your angels. Don't be afraid to, to, to speak your truth. And if you need to write some stuff down, write it down. If you want to write a letter to the universe, I love this. Put what you want down on a piece of paper to the universe. And then sleep in it for three nights. And each night, take it out, reread it and write more down. Because guess what? Regardless of how far-fetched things may seem when you write them down. Three days later... When you go outside and you burn that letter, because fire is energy, every thought starts, it's like castles in the sky. Okay, Patrice? Every castle starts as a thought. Okay, what happens there is somebody like an architect or a planner comes along and takes ink and puts it on paper. And then they have a plan. You're grounding your thoughts with ink. And then by handing them over to spirit and the universe and the angels is you're burning that on, on day four. So you're writing for three days and you're sleeping on it for three nights and then you burn that on night four. So you go outside under the big moon. If there's no moon, it doesn't matter. Get outside, burn it, let it go. OK, if it's an emotional thing that you want to remove out of your life, guys, a great way of doing this as well is writing all those things down. Really, really stuff that really is holding you back right now. If it's other people, places and things, write it down and then rip it in tiny little shreds. OK, put it into some tissue, wrap it up 
and flush it down the loo because it's only crap and it needs to go where the crap is back to the crap so that it'll go off and do something else do you know what I mean but it's no longer with you by physically doing this you're actually telling the universe I've had enough of this crap you know and now I want this 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 and this why because I'm worth it I feel like I'm doing a L'Oreal ad I'm worth it flick (laughs) but you are worth it so um hi Jackie Doyle hi Jill here we have who pick love I'm just lifting the love up now so anyone that pick love your card is coming up let me see let me see let me see okay from Archangel Michael it says for those of you who pick love this situation is already resolved okay so the little prayer with it is I give any worries, cares and concerns to you in exchange for true peace in all ways. Thank you for resolving this whatever issue or situation that you have around you at the moment in a divine, perfect way. The situation is already resolved. Okay. Right, I have to get a drink here because I can feel them coming in all around me. Okay. Hi, Debbie. You picked love. Neve, Holly, Sandra. So everybody can still hear me, yeah? We're we're still going good, yeah? That's great. Thanks, guys. Love the hearts. We're going to keep the energy up. Okay. Okay. What the first thing I'm picking up here is I'm going in around the spirit side before we connect to angels because I need to... um, uh, Okay, I need to acknowledge someone that has a bit of a family situation thing going on at this moment in time, right? But I feel like I'm looking at two different situations that's coming in around somebody. Um, I feel that I need to acknowledge that there's... Uh, <clears throat> I have a lady here, okay? And she has the softest... I don't know whether her eyes are green or brown, or maybe they're 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 in the middle. But she's the softest eyes I've ever seen on a human being. Her hair is grey, and I want to kind of catch it back here. It's like it's off her face. Her hair is away off her face, and it's like she's pulling my hair back, as if to say, "Show them your face. Show them your face." I don't know what she's doing, but anyway, um, she's doing this. Oh, I know what she's doing. Okay. She's doing this to somebody that's watching this live right now. Um, the person that's sitting on the cream sofa or the, the white sofa or something that's very, very cream at the moment. You have a lady to your right hand side um, and she's she has a fuller figure. She's not now. She's not big, but I feel like like that. She carried herself pretty well, but in in the end, she she went down to a small size. Um, oh, um, there's roses and the link. I don't know whether it's the name Rose or she's given this person roses. There's somebody out there that's sitting on a very pale type of um, sofa. This lady sits to one side of her. I need to acknowledge if this she comes in with a son as well i feel like she lost a son to a heart attack as well um i feel like she's passed over i don't know whether it's seven years or ten years but i feel like she's that length of time she's been over in spirit for quite some time but i feel that she's trying to heal a situation that's happening within a family group at the moment okay and i don't know if somebody is if a family was divided now i don't feel like it was through separation okay with 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 a marriage or anything like that i feel it was divided with regards to emotional division um she does show me that there was a two-story house the steps going up to it the grass was i don't know if the grass is still there or if somebody else now lives in that house and maybe they turned it into a driveway i don't know but i keep seeing this um She puts the glasses on, but they kind of sit here, not up here. They sit kind of here on her nose. Um, 
And I think she had a little mm-hmm. mole or something that was here, or maybe it was a birthmark on her on her her let me say her right cheek. Um, also, I need to acknowledge the link with Padre Pio healing with this lady, and also the, that she had such a unique connection with Our Lady, the Mother of all mothers, and having faith in Our Lady. Um, this lady would. Somebody's always doing novenas. I need to acknowledge that the person that's been doing novenas and all the prayers that have been going over there, um, especially for a young male. Um, can I just, I need to acknowledge that these prayers are heard and are being answered. I don't know who Bridget is or Bridgie or Bridie. I don't know why I'm getting that name. But uh, <coughs> she has an older man with her. Um, I do feel like this is someone's grandmother that, that, that I have here or great grandmother that I have here. It's like I'm looking at, there's, it's like there's three generations in in this family and I just feel that there's lots of uh there's lots of uh there's there's small children in, in this family so um she looks after I think the male energy dominates this family as well <laughs> um which is nice. Hiya Shirley okay thank you for 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 validating there to me um Oh, oh, surely I don't want to let the cat out of the bag here. But anyway, I'm going to have to say it because this is what I'm getting here. But I don't know um, if you guys are planning to um, tie the wedding band in a sense or tie the wedding knot, so to speak. But I feel like there's a link with uh, she's showing she's given wedding bells here. Um, if this is for you, Shirley, now I think this is this is really really weird. Um, but but I need to acknowledge her link with No Venus because when she was alive, she did exactly the same. I need to acknowledge, but there is somebody there that I feel he was away when he passed over. I feel there's a man there that's with this lady. He wasn't in Ireland. I don't feel like he lived in Ireland. Um, I feel like he was away. I feel that there was a heart attack with this gentleman. He was brought straight into the spirit world. Boom. And he was gone. Um, I don't know if the name Joseph comes in there. There's a link to the name Joe, but I have to say that name. Um, the link to somebody also who drank quite a bit there as well. So there's two males there with this lady. She's very, 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 very strong. Um, I'm not sure if your dad has pain in his lower back or there's a man there that has pain in the lower back or maybe over the hip, the left hip at the moment. But there's something going on there because there's healing energy. When I see healing energy being placed into someone's body, then that's where the healing will occur. OK, um, and somebody's toe. What is going on? This is so nuts. I hope everybody's OK. Listen to me. But they show me somebody that has something going on with their, I think it's the, their big toe, their big toe. And there's a bit of uh, indigestion problems going on as well with somebody that's sitting watching this right now at this moment in time. And it's like nearly somebody squeezing the big toe as if say that's the type of pain it is. Um, and the link with the lower end of the back and the whole lot. But there's a lot of healing being placed around around that person at the moment but um all right it's it's like she said he keeps going but he doesn't stop he just keeps going because he won't listen and at the moment i think you're going as mm-hmm. fast as your head is going so somebody out there needs to slow down because when we do that what happens is it takes it takes them nearly putting us on our backsides to really go slow down so you don't want to get ill okay you want to maybe slow down and give those worries to the angels and spirit and know that everything is being handled. Now I need to acknowledge also there's lies that were told. And when this card steps up and says this situation is already resolved, it means there's something else that's happening that's bringing truth to light. Okay. 
can everybody that 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 picked this card not be worrying around a situation that they have been really really worrying around okay there's you know we put ourselves in people put themselves into early graves just with pure worry um Sharon McCluskey, your dad's back is, is in the hospital after operation on the bottom left side. Well, you know what, Sharon, I hope that, that this is maybe his, there's a link to a gentleman there that's putting the energy around the bottom of the back there, okay, for somebody. But if there's a situation going on, if there's a situation going on at the moment that I just need to, to acknowledge for you, for those of you who pick love, um, when Archangel Michael and the angels say this situation is resolved, can you sit back in that nice energy in contentment knowing that all will be revealed? I do feel for the person that's out there that there's nothing been a cesspit of lies being placed around this person. You know what? You are protected more than you can ever ever imagine um i do feel there's a big long pause to happen before something's revealed but you know what you're gonna come away from this even stronger the people that that know you and the people that love you know no everybody knows a lie is a lie you know there's there's a thing that I was told when I was very young from my granny always said it and my mother said it as well, you know, a thief you can catch, but a liar you'll never know where you are with them. So you got to be careful of, you know, people who love drama listen to bullshit. And sorry for, for, for saying that like that, but it's the only way I can describe it. So the people that love drama, you know what, you don't need to surround yourself with anyone that loves drama. Stay with the people that keep it real. And the people that love you on, on, a, on a daily basis, the ones that have no problem standing up and saying, that's lies. And it'll be proven that it's lies. I know that will be proven. But um, it'll all just probably fall down around somebody. But somebody tells a lie, you know, it's like everything else. It, they have to have a very good memory because they have to keep up with themselves. And eventually they fall over or they slip up or they trip up and they say something different to another human being where that human being's conscience will step up and go, I can't hold this in and I'm not going to either. So watch what happens. And it could be an older female that, that this may come from. But I'm telling you now, people, lies, it's like shite floats. Shite floats. And it sure does. And it will in around particular situations around people. Um, you know what? There's somebody else also out there worried around. Um, somebody's either been asking, I really need to know if my mum is listening. I really need to know if my mum can hear me. Um, I don't know who Maria is or Mary, but I need to say that name for somebody, okay? Um, I just need... Um, I need to acknowledge somebody out there needs to know that their mammy is always, always, always with them and watching them. Now, there's something funny here because whoever this is, I don't think she likes the colour of the room that you painted. I'm not sure that... Gr I think it's green. I don't think green's her colour. I don't think she liked the colour green. I don't know whether you're living in her house Oh, you've just painted something and you think, oh, that's lovely. But she's gone. That's rotten. <laughs> Tell her I don't like the colour on the wall. Oh, my God. You know what? You see, the personalities don't change just because they step into spirit. God help anyone that connects with me when I go into spirit. They'll have their hands full. But um, this lady's quite colourful. She says it as she sees it. But someone who's either, I don't know whether it's a bedroom or it's a kitchen, but it, it, she doesn't like that colour. Does not like that colour. And somebody has been saying recently as well, why did you paint it that colour? I thought you were going to do it cream. And someone was going, oh no, I'm fed up with cream. Fed up with cream. So it's like, it's like I'm looking at this banter in a kitchen where it's like, oh no, I just picked that. And then I think he could be sitting back looking at it this evening going, oh, maybe she's right. <laughs> Be mindful of the colours that you put around you. 
Um, oh God, Francine. Okay, Francine is your mammy in spirit, by the way. Um, I don't know if you've also lifted the carpet because I feel like I, I need to lift carpet that could be down maybe 10 or 15 years as well. Something needs to be lifted. And I feel like there's tiles or something, or maybe you're going to put tiles down uh, on the floor. But um, this lady that comes in, I just feel... Who is Monica? 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 Why am I getting that name, Monica? Um, I need to say that name. Um, the tiles, there's something to do with floors, tiles. Oh, Jennifer Curran. Is it a dark green, Jennifer? Sorry. <laughs> okay, Francine. It's just that this lady that I have here, um, it's like she nearly wants to have uh, a drink in her hand and she, it's like she's standing there with her hand on the hip looking at these walls going, what were they doing or what was she thinking putting green on the walls? Okay, so... <laughs> and uh, something to do with... with um, there's somebody's birthday coming up as well that, that, that wants to be celebrated. But I also feel... Um, as much as I, I tell people, um, you know, th they're not in the graveyard, they're not there. As much as we need to have somewhere to go to connect with, with our loved ones, it's nice to have that comfort knowing that we can go to a particular place to, to connect with them. But you know what? Somebody's talking about, someone's talking about spending quite a bit of money on... Uh, the surrounds of a grave and a headstone and they really don't want that happening. This, I have a gentleman here. Okay, let me sit back here for a second. I have a gentleman here in spirit, right? I have to say, I have to say the name Oliver or Ollie, but um, I think he was also known as John, John Oliver. Now, this is after flying off the table on me. Um, <laughs> good God, the energy. Um, the name Oliver is very, very strong here with this gentleman. Now, he did pass over with a breathing condition and he, um, I could be emphysema lung cancer, but I feel like somebody has been having a discussion, and I don't know whether it was today, about going to the graveyard and getting the edging or surrounds done of a grave and fixed and whatever. And he's like, I'm not there. Why are they doing that? Don't be wasting money. I think he was a bit frugal with his few bob. And, you know, um, the older generation. I feel like he was 78 or 79 when he passed over. and But his whole chest area, it was like... No, he didn't like hospitals, but I will say this to you. I think he did pass in a hospital bed as much as he didn't want to be there. I think that's how he... Um, he, he stepped into the spirit world. Now, there's somebody also out there whose mother is either in a nursing home or there's a lady in... Sp Do you know what? This is so crazy because I connect also with people who have Alzheimer's and their bodies are here, but their minds and their energy travel to, to the spirit world. Um, It's ongoing, okay? And they're closer to the spirit world and they can be like that for years and years and years. And I know people think that's an awful way to be, but... They are so connected and they're so loved and they're so being looked after by spirit that, um, you know, nothing bad will ever happen. But I need to acknowledge there's a lady I feel that's in a hospital bed or in a, no, it's a nursing home because I've not seen a hospital setting. It's quite cosy and homely and, you know, um, but I feel that for somebody, whoever is out there whose mother is in or grandmother for that matter, in a nursing home at the moment that possibly has a touch of dementia or Alzheimer's right now. Can you listen to what she's saying about either your your father or your grandfather? Because it's like he's visiting a lot. And I feel that it's coming up to either his anniversary or a birthday connection. And I just feel the need to say that it's like the, the, she is correct connecting directly to him and anyone that be listening to her talking or rattling on a little bit may say oh she's away talking to whoever you know can you just take five minutes and maybe stop and listen to what she's saying 
because she's connecting directly to somebody's father or grandfather. And I have to say the name John. Have to say that name. And it's like he's there all of the time. But I feel that she's talking more to him on a daily basis. And somebody needs to listen to the conversation because it's like I want to go back in time where I'm seeing somebody loved Coleman's mustard. I'm seeing a jar of mustard here. I've been handed a jar of mustard, Coleman's mustard. OK, not the yellow stuff. Um, and it's not the little stuff. Oh, the Alice stuff is the Coleman's. It had to be Coleman's mustard. And the cabbage had to be fried off on the pan after it was cooked with a big knob of butter with this man. So he liked his grub. And that was obviously his favourite Sunday dinner because I see the mustard. It's like the whole table got set on a Sunday. Not on a Monday to Friday, but it got set on a Sunday. And it's like everybody just sat around and, you know, connected as families I think that's a lot of that is missing these days about families not sitting together and eating together and being a family you know um but this gentleman is very 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 strong around somebody who is either oh I don't know if you're on a diet or you're eating the wrong food or there's something that that you're not listening to with your body it's like um and he gives me the pain across my shoulders and across the 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 lungs can everybody still hear and see me okay because sandra said she can't there um he's gonna hear okay that's great that's great that's great there was a bit of a stall there i didn't know okay what's happening there but i need to acknowledge Mm -hmm. with this gentleman right i have to say the name john i want to say the name Martin and um, I need to acknowledge that there is somebody else there who passed over through very okay there was a tragic person with with this I'm picking up on, on, on a male here who passed over through his own hands I am picking up on um, it was night time when this happened and there's possibility that it happened just before Christmas with this person or on the run up to Christmas I feel like there was a huge amount of anxiety around this man Um, but I do feel that because of financial and other stuff it's like there was a black cloud going around this person's head all the time and the thing is he appeared to be the nearly like the class clown or the funny person in the group or in the family where there was always a bit of crack, but in his own energy and when he was on his own, that he just felt like he was so lonely and so alone. And I need to acknowledge how he passed. (sighs) Okay. Just bear with me now, because how this person, how this male passed, I have to say that... um, I am getting a tightening around my throat, so I do feel that he took his own life. And um, I feel that two people found him. Um, I feel that there was children left behind as well. And I just think that it was the situation and what happened was horrendous for any human being to either ordeal to go through or to experience for anybody that, that has lost somebody through such tragedy. Um, but he's, he just keeps saying... Oh, he just keeps saying, oh, he's making me cry. He just keeps saying he's sorry. He didn't mean to hurt anybody. He just wanted to remove himself from the situation and and then it would all go away. He didn't realise that the pain or the energy that was going to happen afterwards. He didn't think when somebody is in that depth of, of... of a black hole they don't know what's happening so you know it's only when they've slept in the spirit world and the healing has occurred that they come through and they go i'm so sorry for causing the people that i love oh my god the energy in this room um the pain because he didn't want that pain and heartache i don't know who david is but i keep getting the name david and it is really really sad natalie o'sullivan because 
the, the emotion that he's putting on to me is that he would never have hurt these people that he loved. I have to say, Anne. Don't know who Anne is. Maybe Anne is his sister or maybe Anne is his partner. But I need to acknowledge that there was two children that were left behind as well. Oh, God. Okay. I'm really sorry to hear that, Francine. Really, really sorry. Okay, Sandra. It's, you know what? Spirit can come through and they can have everybody in fits of laughter. And in a blink of an eye, they can have us all in tears. And it's it's just that emotion that goes with them. And because he feels so strongly about getting through to me and saying, please tell them I'm sorry, I would never hurt them. Um, but he loves Anne. I don't know who Anne is. Keep saying, tell Anne I love her. Tell Anne I love her. Um, anyway. It happened. I don't know whether it was this time last year or was or, or it was coming up or it was just after Christmas when this happened. But I need to say that, okay? Um, and you know what? He has... And no, he has a friend there that passed through an accident with him. And that name, Michael, keeps coming in. Michael, 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 Michael keeps coming in there. Um, and he, ha I don't know whether he was driving a red car. Or he was hit by a red car, but I don't see another car. I think he was driving and I think he hit a bad bend. And I think that's how the car rolled. And I think that's how he passed over. I need to acknowledge that it was instantly when when this person passed over as well. Can somebody stop going over how they found this person? I Because it's like he keeps saying to me, there's somebody that keeps playing this like a video every single night when they're going to bed. Can you ask the angels to lift that off you? I'm going to ask them for you to lift that vision away from you so that, you know what, he wants you to move forward with your life. Okay? Um he doesn't want you stuck. Now, somebody's either going to university or they're going to do some really big deal in their life that maybe it stopped when he passed over, that um, that life kind of stopped for about four to seven months after he passed over. And it's like um, all of a sudden now you're getting this push to move forward. And it's like, this is somebody's dad who's helping them to move forward in their lives now. He also sees the person that, I don't know who Jared is or Jerry is, but I, I but he also sees the person that, that, that this person's in a relationship with and he does like him. So um, you're getting the thumbs up there. I think you've met your life partner, whoever this is for. I think you've met your life partner. I think your dad in spirit is going Thumbs up. I don't think he liked the last fella, but oh, he was a bit scary in a sense of he was a bit of a bully. But anyway, he obviously he has helped to manifest love in your life because he knows that this person will take care of you and they won't mess you about or they won't cheat on you. And they won't make you think that you're going to after in the head when it's really them that's gone a bit loopers. So you're not going to get taken for granted. This father here in this in the spirit world that's coming through with this information, let me tell you something, he's a very proud man. But not only that, he's a very protective man when it comes to his daughter. And proper relationship for you. Um, Just let me get a drink here. This is nuts. Welcome to my world. Isn't it great? So, you know what? Somebody needs to do... Okay, somebody needs to be decide. Decide to be happy now. I mean, we can be miserable and think of the negative. And I mean, a bit like that energy that come in there and put that emotion on me. And I could feel the lump going up in my throat. I'd end up bawling because I'm as soft as butter on the inside as well. And because I feel their pain, I feel their emotion. So if they come in and start crying, Fiona's going to be whinging too. But if they come in and start taking the mick, you know what? That's what's going to come out of me as well. So, you know, it's just I go with that flow. I have to do that. And anybody can connect with spirit, by the way. You don't have to be a sitting Buddha 
doing a mantra to connect with yourself or spirit. They're always there, always ask them for help. But I need to acknowledge somebody out there really has to decide. People out there now have to decide, I want to be happy. Because you know what? Some people are so used to the crap and they're so used to feeling the negative and they're so used to the moaning and the whole lot. You know those people that you meet on the street and you go, oh, here she comes, I can't cope. You know, um, it's, you know, I, I have a friend whose mother rings her and tells her, wait till I tell you who died today. And she'd just be like, I don't want to know. <laughs> It's a bit like that person. They don't realise they're doing it. But, you know, it's like, nah, I don't do with that energy anymore. Try and get, keep, if you can keep your energy positive and if somebody phones you up and your phone is ringing and you see that that person on the other line is the one that's going to pull out of your energy, hit the red button and don't bother answering. Leave a, leave a message. My voicemail tells people, if it's positive, leave a message. If it's negative, phone somebody else. And that's, you know what, they can like it or lump it. Most people laugh when they hear it and they say, oh, eh, uh, eh, uh, and they forget what they're going to leave a message for. So anyway, but look, at keeping things positive, for those of you who pick love, you know, there's a situation that's already resolved, even if you can't see it right now. Even if you feel lost, then... That situation has already been resolved around you. If it's a case that you want to move forward into something and you don't really know which direction to go, you know what, maybe step, step back and let them show you. But you've got to open yourself up to being able to connect and be able to see your little leads and your little messages and your little signs, you know. They're not going to ascend from the heavens like our Lord and go, here you go, Fiona. This is the path you're meant to be on. Away you go. Good girl. No, that's not life. Because I know me. I had to trip up, fall over, bang my head, roll over, skin my knees, break me toes, <coughs> break fingers, break my nose. I've done it, you know. But guess what? I've got through it all and I'm, I'm, I'm stronger for, for and, and better for it. I've been there with, with the anxiety attacks. I've been there to anyone that ever suffered with a panic attack. Um, when my first daughter was born, anxiety hit me like mm. a lump hammer to the point where I would be frozen stiff. So, you know, what happens when we have such emotional experience, whether it's giving birth or somebody passing over or having a bit of of fear around us, sometimes the anxiety can make you go paralyzed. So I know what that's like, being there, done that. But guess what? I'm still sitting here and I'm still standing and I'm still going. Why? Because it's false evidence appearing real. It's not real. And you know what? I had the blessing of having a, a fabulous woman who is my mum's best friend, um, you know, at 12 o'clock at night, leave her house to come over and sit in my mother's sitting room getting me to focus on something on the wall and just breathe. I had to learn how to breathe when I was 20, you know. But now, 20 years later, you know, I'm still breathing. I'm still standing for now. <laughs> but I will continue to breathe. And any anxiety or anything like that that comes around, because we see the signs, notice the signs in your body. Listen to your body. And when you listen to your body, then you can fix it. It's all fixable. But don't be afraid to reach out to somebody and say, I need a bit of help here. Somebody that you know, someone that, that, that you love and they love you, they're, they're only going to help you. So for anyone that is getting that paralyzed with anxiety around a particular situation at this moment in time in your life, guess what? You are breathing. You are a living soul. And this is being resolved. And always remember, again, as they say, a thief you can catch. But lies, you know what? That stuff floats to the top and everything will come out. Um, absolutely, Neef. Deep breathing is fantastic for any type of anxiety. 
Um, but and I and I would recommend um, meditation for everybody, everybody, children as well, you know. So, who picked hope? Here we go. Look, has anybody picked hope? Who's picked up? I love seeing those love hearts. And, you know, maybe I I, I, I won't jinx it. No, I will. Um, you know what? The other night um, we were doing these and I said, am I having a Toffee Crisp moment? As in, you know, that old ad back, I'm sure my age now, but back in, in the late 80s, we used to, the old woman was having the seance and she used to say, are you there, Sydney? And that's what I was saying the other night. And all of a sudden, all the energy just went nuts. And, and oh, my God, it was very, very funny. But you know what? The energy was great. And um, oh, let's see. oh, my God, it's after getting stuck. OK, so the energy was great. But of course, Fiona being, being the messer that I am, you know, saying I'm, I'm, I think I'm having um, a toffee crisp moment. <laughs> Right, do you know what's weird is when this card came out, there was another card stuck to it. So there's two cards here, okay? For those of you who picked hope. So the first one is from Archangel Michael. Isn't that beautiful? I don't know if everybody can see it with the light, but it's absolutely beautiful. And it says, you are guarded and protected. Marion, Denise, Mary Murphy. Hello, Mary Murphy. Um, so the little prayer on the back of that one says, go get glasses, Fiona. Um, Thank you for protecting my loved ones and me, ensuring that we're safe and all that of our needs are met. I now accept your help gratefully and gracefully, knowing that it's the right, that it's right for me and all others to accept heaven's assistance you know sometimes we just need to accept it you know um you just gotta ask prayer is asking and sitting quietly for five minutes a day is listening so that you can accept um dreams coming through in your life and change coming coming into your life you know unless we clear out the old and the baggage we can't bring anything else in it's a bit like the spring clean in the wardrobe and in the house, getting rid of the black bags of of, of old clothes and, and old crap that we used to keep and say, sure, I might need that. I'll put that in the shed. And all of a sudden the shed's stuffed to the point where you can't fit anything in. Guess what? Your life is like that shed. OK. But 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 with nicer paint, more comfortable. But your life can be like that shed. You know that thing or the attic for, for years ago. Everybody used to put stuff in their attics. Um, but the shed, when we start to hoard stuff. Anybody, anybody identify with maybe looking around them right now and saying, mm, I could do a clearing that, but it kind of gets put in the long finger, you know. To allow something to come in, we have to make room in our lives to, to let that come in. Absolutely. What's for you won't pass you. Absolutely, Ray Ray. Um, but making space in your life. So what we do in physically in the lives, in our daily lives, we clear our presses, we clear the wardrobes, we clear the shed and we get the skip and we just, you know the way you feel just... I can breathe now. That feeling of you've accomplished something, you've cleared a whole room out and you've made big changes and all of a sudden the colours around you, you're going to change them because guess what? You're growing. So everything around you, your space is growing as well. So that's a bit like asking the angels and asking the universe, bring me this. And they're looking at you going, well, you know what? You make a bit of room there now. And then we'll just bring it in. So when we ask, clear your crap, clear the crap out of your life. And that is, it's not just physical stuff, but it's ple people, places and things in your lives that, you know what, just they don't just serve any purpose anymore. So maybe it's time for a bit of a clear out. Maybe it's time for you to sit back and ask, you know, 
what can I change or what can I remove from my life so that I can open everything else up in my life? Vivian Sheridan, I'm such a hot. <laughs> yeah, you know what, Vivian, you will feel so good if you just decide. Start in one corner. Don't overpower yourself. Just begin in a small space. When we take that step to do something small, guess what? It clears bigger, bigger spaces. And then what happens when we make room? Something new comes in the door. It could be a new piece of furniture. Or do you know what? Maybe somebody wants a relationship. Maybe somebody out there is looking for a new lady or a new man. And maybe it's time to make room in your home, in your life, for somebody to be able to share that space with you. And the same with them. So there's a possibility that, you know, the, that old devil called love coming in around the corner for somebody, you know, but you're being minded and protected. And that's also when I say that about a relationship coming in around the corner, I need to acknowledge uh, somebody's been thinking, stop judging other people. Don't judge the new people in your life from the ones that you've just removed. That is that is a humdinger of a no-no, okay? Be mindful of uh, when you are in a relationship or you're going into a relationship or you've stepped out of one and you've just met somebody new in your life. Can you not... Uh, don't Try not to prejudge that person and try not to bring the old baggage. Again, this is like the spring cleaning, guys. Don't bring the old baggage from the last relationship into this new one, okay? I know there's people on here tonight that that have been kind of questioning relationship and something that's new. And it could be only two or three days new or two or three weeks new, but it's really new. And that person's not going to have a hope and hell's chance to stay in your life if you're not going to make the bloody room. And then you'll walk away going, oh, I knew that would happen. Absolutely, because you invited straight in the door. Be mindful what you say. Be mindful of how you say it to the universe. And, you know, who are we to prejudge anybody? Walk in their shoes first before you do that. But what I always say to people is try and, you know, an ex is an ex for a reason. They're meant to be left in the past. And God bless them. And anyone that picks up the rubbish behind you, you know, sure, somebody needs it. You know, someone's rubbish is somebody's gold. They'll think they hit the jackpot. But, you know, again, it's in it's where they are in their lives and how awake they are in their lives. So an ex is an ex for a reason. When if you have somebody new just in your life recently, can you give yourself and give that person half a chance just it. They don't have to prove themselves, by the way. They're not in a competition. They don't have to prove themselves. But guess what? You make room and make space in your life, whether it's for a human being to come in as a relationship, whether it's you want, maybe you want a whole walk-in wardrobe and it's time to get rid of the crap. I know when that when I lost um, the, the three stone drink of the cup of coffee every day, that when I went to... to uh, clear out my wardrobe there was nothing left for me to wear but um you know i put on facebook that evening the six bags of clothes here even with tags on them that for somebody who wants them and uh, they went to they went to six homes and uh, i was able to start afresh great excuse to go for an old shop <laughs> lose a bit away that doesn't fit me anymore i have to go and shop yes love it <laughs> love tk max Sure, I'm still mental bad, but anyway, um, yeah, Claire Glennon, absolutely. Families can be the worst for judging, okay? Um, but look, what I will say is know that you're always guarded and you are always protected. There, are, you're also now the other card that was stuck to that card was this card here, okay? So you've been told to spend more time outdoors if somebody. That anyone that picked hope, you know what? If you, maybe you're spending too many hours inside, maybe you're spending too many hours glued to a TV, or even worse, a laptop. Um, they can be like I mean, I don't have any gadgets around me when I'm going to bed. Try and keep your phones away from your heads, or at least four four meters away from your body. Um, you know, 
uh, I saw a thing on, on Facebook the other day that said, what's your favourite position? And they said, uh, the cl- closer to the plug so I can see my phone flashing, you know what I mean? And I thought it was brilliant. But you know what? That's what it's got to right now. When you're being told to get out and get outside, you know, Mother Nature is waving at you every single day and you miss it. Why do you miss it? Because we're so focused on the problems and we're so focused on, I have to do this, have to do this. You don't have to do nothing. The only thing that you will be doing in this life is stepping back over into the afterlife. That's the only thing you have to do, okay? We do have commitments around family, friends and other things around us, but we don't have to do anything that we don't want to do and doesn't feel comfortable to us. I only make suggestions on this. You know, maybe it's time to go and buy yourself a pair of big wellies. Buy yourself a pair of wellies and go for a good walk. Go get out into the fields and, you know what, check out with with, with Mother Nature because she's there all the time. She's ever-changing. She's ever-growing. And we are the ones that limit our sight. We limit our smell. We limit our taste. And we limit everything around us when we get the blinkers on us. It's like the horse. You know that horse of life? And you hold so tightly to those reins that, you know what, it's like this. You're nearly rigid in your life because it has to be this way. I have to do this this way. Guess what? Chill out. Nothing has to be any way. When the man above made time, he made plenty of it, you know. Use your time well. Don't sit back in 10 years' time and say, I wish I did that, or I should have done that, or I could have done that. You know what? Do it. What's it what, if there's one thing for everybody on here tonight can do for you tomorrow that you've always wanted to do, if there's one little step that you can take to going there or doing that, whether it's visiting a place, having something physical in your life, uh, whether it's around a car, if it's a favourite car and you want a particular car, you know what, go take a test drive. See what it feels like. Open up your eyes to the bigger picture and what life has. Take stock of what's around you and make the clearing big. Clear your crap. So that the universe can just say, oh, that's grand. Now she's after making space there. In it goes. There you go. Thank you very much. And don't forget to say thank you to the lads above. Guys, I'm so happy that um, I got to sit here tonight because it's 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 lovely to be able to connect with people across the globe, not just down the road, but, but globally to be able to connect with people and, you know, connect with, with, with spirit and the angels, you know. We're never alone. And I'm not saying that to frighten you, okay? I'm saying that to comfort somebody out there, to everybody out there. Um, yeah, Sharon Corway says that they, you only regret the things you don't do. Absolutely. Go for it. Um, you know, I have a couple of people said to me, actually recently, Fiona, I don't know how you do that traveling all the way over to, to LA and New York and all that on your own, blah, blah, blah. But you know something? If I didn't do it, why I, I could be sitting maybe 20 or 30 years, please, God, down the road going, your granny was, was, was given this opportunity, but she never took it. My arse. Take every opportunity that comes. Opportunities will come and go all the time. The things that are meant for you won't pass you. Sometimes they will, because guess what? We're so focused on looking down. On the ground, we're not looking at what's happening in life because we don't want to acknowledge that we might actually feel a bit of pain with one thing or we might actually feel happy. What a shock. We might actually feel happy. Lift your head up. Look at what's around you. Take stock of what's in your life and say, do I need these shoes? Do I need this jumper? Or do I need these negative people, places and things in my life? Now, this is Mammy Fiona <laughs> talking. You don't need to do that. You don't need the negative. You don't need the, the, the crap. And I, you know what? Families can be the worst. They're the first to run other people down at times. And every family, and I'm telling you, there's not a family out there across the globe, wherever they are, that haven't come across emotional, mental or physical hardship 
So it's from that hardship they can you can either pick yourself up and make, let it, let that make you a stronger person, or you can sit and roll in the crap like a little like a little uh, piglet running around in the poo. They love it. They love nothing but but dirt. You will have people around you that are magnets for drama. Get away from the drama. Keep the drama dramatics for the television, which is the worst thing ever. That telly is very rarely on in this house. Um, because people say to me, oh, did you see such and such the other day and such and such? And I'm going, I don't watch telly. And they're looking at me like I've ten heads. But the thing is, I don't. No, I like a good movie, do you know? But something that is uplifting. Um, do I need to watch Emmerdale Farm and EastEnders and Coronation Street and Fair City and all that shite? No, I don't. Because you know what? The dramas that's on that TV is everywhere. If I want to look at them, I don't need to put on the telly. They're all outside the door if I want to invite that energy in, you know. So, you know, programs, think of it, programs. You're being programmed by TV. Literally, you're being programmed, you know. So be selective with your friends. Be selective with who knows your heart's desires and be selective with what energy gets across your threshold, in your home. Now, your home is this, your body, your home. This is where you are. The overcoat that we, that, that, that covers the soul for this journey called life before it steps back into its other life. Okay? Mind this and the rest will mind itself. Guys, you know what? It's been an absolute pleasure. I hope... Myself and my silver lady and Archangel Michael up there and all that are in spirit. You know, you're never alone. Know that when you close your eyes, there's always somebody looking out for you and you are loved. And that's the thing. You're all loved. And maybe your self-worth. Maybe tell the angels to work on the self-worth people. But you're so welcome. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you so much for everybody that, that came on tonight. Um, I, I never, people often ask me, you know, when I'm doing a reading, how long does it take? I'm saying, how long is a piece of string? Because I keep going until they actually kind of step back and slow things down. So, you know, that's just me. That's just the way I am. So, it could, you know, I go with that flow. It's nice to go with the flow. I, I don't work by the clock. But um, Phoebe McDonough, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Geraldine Beardsley, see you later, Dennis. See you later, Beardsley. Um, Ross Keegan, big hugs, Ross. You're so welcome. That's a very strong young gentleman out there now. And uh, very proud of him. And the lads above are very proud of him. But you know what? It's time to kick up your heels and maybe go for a dance, Ross. You know, we don't let life or other people get us down, let me tell you, sunshine. Catherine Boylan, they're lovely love hearts. It's been a lovely, lovely evening for me. And um, as you can see, the candles are there, the fire is lit. I have six stockings. The child put six stockings for the dogs. <laughs> Open the mantelpiece. I don't know if anyone can see them. But they're actually full of treats for the dogs. Crackers. But that's this house, you know. And I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, it's nice to smile. And even little things like that. If they make you smile and they make a child happy, who else cares? Doesn't matter. Have a very good night, guys. I enjoy tomorrow. Remember, get up in the morning and just say, I choose to have a good day. And whoever wants to have a little bit of negativity... Flick them away and say, I'm not listening to you. If the phone rings, if it's a colleague in work, it doesn't matter. Flick them away. Meanwhile, in the morning, I'll be having my cup of Valenta Slim Rose coffee and I will be flying. Anyone that wants to know about the coffee, you know what? It's one cup a day. Melts the fat and the pounds and the inches away. And it makes you feel really, really good. Anyway, good night. God bless and no you're never alone.